What is going on, everybody? Chad here back with you. Thanks for stopping by the channel. We want to talk about the Run Cam Mr. Steel edition today. It's on this new Source 1 version 3 uh, build that I did with Steel's motors. Uh, it's pretty much like all Steel inspired, except it is Flight 1, which Flies perfect for me and many other people. No reason to switch to KISS or nothing. Uh, before we talk about the camera, one thing. These pants on the, the Ethics uh, Steel Motors, just great. I remember when they first came out, people just like kind of took a crap all over them because they're like, oh, they're going to add weight and this and that and everything else. But now that we're flying 6S and everything else, it's great. I took a dirt dive with this thing on my first flight and it was so nice you know just taking a toothbrush and cleaning all the dirt and stuff off of all of these uh motors and i know you know you can see how they stick out there i just know that if those pants wouldn't have been on there i would have had mud and everything like that that inside my brand new motors after one flight so that would have been pretty disheartening so the pants are definitely worth it. The, we'll talk about the quad maybe later, but you know, it's a five inch, it flies Falco one, it's great. The motors are super smooth, I love it. Um, we'll talk about it later. But anyway, here is, here's the steel cam. And it's gonna take a certain frame to fit these this camera because we're all so used to like micro and nano, nano sized cameras now. So with the big old honky GoPro lens on there, which by the way, it's a 2.5 millimeter lens with the GoPro lens on there. And you'll see from the DVR, it creates a weird effect. Sometimes you don't notice it and sometimes you do. There's no fish eye or nothing like that. So we'll talk about it, but you know, just keep in mind how big it is. I'm using some recessed 3D printed mounts there, and it's stuck all the way back in there. I slammed this down to 23 millimeters. So if you're using like the regular Source One or something that's 30 inches that has uh, K plates, it will go all the way, you know, to the back back here. But since I'm using mine in this configuration, I've got a ton of lens sticking out there. It doesn't really bother me uh, because, you know, I'm not one to take risky moves with my uh, five inch builds really anymore because they're just not, I mean, this thing flies great, but it's a nice mid range light acro cruiser now because our toothpicks and stuff are just so fantastic. So let's take a look at some DVR footage real quick and I'll make this a little bigger here. It's hard to play this stuff back even with power play. Uh, let's just make it all the way bigger. So this is the Runcam Nano 3, the little one gram, 1.7 gram camera that we run on our toothpicks. And I went through and checked a lot of my other DVR footage. And I mean, quite honestly, the differences between the two cameras, you'll be able to tell right off the bat. Now. This is the Nano 3, we all know how it looks. It's a CMOS camera. So if you look at the ground, you're picking up a little bit of like blockiness and ground effects and stuff like that. And you can see a little bit more detail. It's been nothing but clouds here today, this like past couple weeks. So it's kind of hard to do a daylight comparison. I'm thinking in the daylight, the run cam uh, from steel might look a little bit better in some of the ways that I was uh, I'm thinking I don't see as much shimmering when it comes to those like shimmering colors that you get with uh, you know CMOS cameras and stuff but I definitely uh, can tell the biggest difference right off the bat you'll be able to see here as we fast forward to uh, that footage all right so here is the DVR from the steel edition 
camera. And now keep in mind, it comes with his presets. I didn't change anything at all. And the biggest thing that I notice is that it's just a consistent image from top to bottom. Like it doesn't do anything great except for light changing and light handling. Um, there's no vignetting. It's a nice flat picture when it comes to like the color, the contrast, the brightness, everything else. Oddly enough, I had to like crank the brightness and contrast down on my HDO twos uh, for this camera when I typically run them a little bit higher with other cameras. So that's kind of holding true that even though CMOS cameras are more sensitive, the CCDs themselves, the sensors, are able to pick up light in a different, just in a different manner. Um, and then, of course, you've got all the processing overlaid and everything else like that. But, yeah, if you look, you know, you there's not as much color blockiness and stuff in the goggles. It's always going to show that in a DVR. It's not as muddy um, as, or pixelated. It's a little bit muddier uh, because the CMOS can show us a little bit more at the cost of that light handling so you know if we look here and you can see the details and stuff like that um and that there's just no difference so i'm anxious to check this out like on a really bright sunny day if we ever get one of those to see how things go the good thing about that is that you know how your micro uh, cameras, your CMOS cameras, your micro eagles and stuff like that, the shimmering effect g gets really bad when the sun's out and you see a lot more of the pixel colors. You know, you can see right there, there was no light changes. It didn't go black, it didn't go white or anything. It just did what it needed to do while the image was spinning. But on a bright day, CMOS cameras, you know, they look great in, in some aspects, but they look horrible in others. Um, you know, especially with the sharpening and stuff like that. So it's nice to have the ability with the CCD to not have as much sharpening. So, I mean, I say for 33 bucks, if you're in the market for a camera, pick one up. They will be like a limited run uh, just because they just will be because there's only so many of these uh, CCD sensors that are available. I plan on trying this one on one of my on my uh, FPV crawler that I have uh, just because, well, I'll show you. I mean, this is like your best example that you're going to get here that you can see the shimmering and everything like going on through the trees and stuff like that. And you just don't get that with CCD sensors. And that's a really nice thing to not have to deal with. Uh, there's very little of it, if any. Um, you know, driving through the grass here and stuff like that. Maybe you get a little bit more detail because of the sharpness, but you know, you also are just kind of losing your, you're overlapping it with all of that different, uh, pixelation and everything like that. So I'm not sure really which way is the best way to go. Uh, you know, CMOS cameras are definitely more punchy when it comes to color and stuff like that. But again, that might not be such a good thing. It really comes down to what you like. The good thing about buying this camera is that you know it's good, it's proven, and that it works. It's not like buying the Latex Cat X or something like that, that you don't know if it's just gonna smoke on you every five minutes or what. Like this camera is the same sensor and board and everything else uh, that we've had for years, uh, just uh, changed a little bit. And this GoPro keeps on turning on and off on me. So anyway, I hope that was a good example for everybody to kind of give you some information. Not too long, not too crazy. Thanks for stopping by. Pick one up. We'll talk to you later.